Namaste. I am Dr. Madhusudan Patel. I'm 82 years old. And I'm one of the most fortunate persons on this earth because I was blessed by the Divine Mother and Sri Aurobindo in the Sri Vinda Ashram, Pondicherry, India. I was also extremely fortunate because at the age of five or six, the mother of the ashram removed me from the care of my biological parents who lived also in Pondicherry. And she brought me up personally as her own son and child until she recommended at about the age of 22, I guess, to go for studying, 21 or 22, to go for my studies to Germany and then onwards to United States and Canada. This is video clip number one of a series of videos that we intend to make regarding the following topic, the role of various energies and your brain for better understanding and for applying the teachings of great spiritual masters such as the mother and Sri Aurobindo. Now, the main purpose of these videos is to help people apply. These videos apply what they learn from spiritual masters, regardless of who these spiritual masters are. Important is they learn how to apply what they have learned. So these videos are not dedicated to teaching what the mother of Shobindo have taught. These you can read for yourself in so many wonderful numerous books that the mother and Shobindo have written. My personal interest and involvement in this video and the purpose of these videos are uh, is to assist you in understanding how to apply what you have learned, what you have understood from your spiritual masters, like the mother and Shobindo. Because I was perplexed when I observed that the majority of people who follow a spiritual path, a religion or a faith, and also those who do not believe, who are atheists, who do not, do not believe in God or whatever, whatever what surprised me is to see this incredible amount of suffering in all these people. I have rarely met somebody who is truly happy and who is self-realized. And I will give definition to you as to what I think is self-realization and so many other things, including what is spirituality and how you apply these things. The important thing is that I would like you to know that the problem behind the fact that you and so many people are suffering, even though people truly, sincerely go to temples, go to ashrams, people sincerely meditate for hours and do yoga, they perform various rituals, and they are sincere in the sense, they are sincere in seeking and asking for help. But this is where I personally through my analysis found out that asking is not perhaps enough. In other words, unconsciously, I see that people treat God unknowingly as a human being, as a person, and almost as a servant by asking God to perform that's what they want to realize. So that if somebody wants to become, a, 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 let's say, a political power, then he prays and he seeks from the Divine that he gets this power, or that he passes a particular exam, or that he attains certain economic well-being. But this is always asking. And what surprises me is that they have not understood that asking is an energy, energy. But if you're asking to someone who is not present physically, 
How do you expect that person to perform what you're asking? So the divine, according to everybody, as you know, is not there physically there. But the divine is an energy. And in order to evoke this energy, you have to use energy to evoke. Only fire can light fire. Water cannot light fire. It's your inner energy that can activate this other energy, the divine energy, into put it into action. So what I'm trying to say is it is not wrong to go to the temple and pray and ask. It is not wrong to ask the mother and children for help. It is the first step. But then you have to understand that don't do it like does a parrot. You cannot, you cannot pass your graduate studies just by singing praise about the program of that graduate studies. You have to follow the courses. You have to pass the exams. And then you get your diploma, you get your graduate degree. So the same thing, it is not enough that I sing praise to the mother and Shobindo and singing praise to them, thinking or believing that if I sing praises to them, if I talk about them, if I preach about them, that they are the masters people should follow, if I convert people to Mother and Shobindo, if I read their books and so on, that is not enough, it is important. But that is not the story. The truth is, that in order for your prayers to be manifested, it means manifestation is when something becomes true, when it becomes a reality. I'll give you an example. This particular chair in which I'm sitting was not manifested. It was not there physically before it was created. It was the idea of the person who created this chair, who said, who prayed and said, I would like to do something in my life. I don't want to become a doctor or an architect, but I would like to make something with my hands. And he decides that he wants to build furniture. And there too, he's very clear, saying, I don't want to build almeras or tables. I want to make a chair, an office chair, like the one on which I'm sitting right now. And the more he thinks, and this is like a prayer, and he's structuring it. He's very sure. He knows exactly what he wants. And then what does he do? Sure, he aspires. And I'll explain what this aspiration is. I have a lot of questions people have asked me. And I'm going to read them and I'm going to answer them. In each video clip, I will answer a few more questions, explain a few more things, and hope that you'll enjoy. So, he, his prayer is that he wants to make this year. But what does he do? He doesn't just sit all day and say, I would like to make a chair, I would like to make a chair. No. He organized himself to learn how to make these things. He went and bought the material. He bought the tools, the equipment and everything. And then he physically started working on it till this chair became a, till this chair became a reality. And that is what you call the process of manifestation. He prayed for something, he thought about something, he desired or aspired for something. All these are incredible energies and this thing become your life. Now, talking of energies, and as I said, the title of these videos are related to the role of various energies and your brain. This is very important. It is the mother who encouraged me to study and had told me, specialize in the field, of neurology, the brain, because it's an extremely important biological instrument in our body. So that's why the brain, and you will be amazed, I will tell you, and you will see that if you understand also what your, that, which role your brain plays, you will see that it will make the process of your aspiration, of your spiritual process, far easier and perhaps even more enlightened and interesting. And so the role of various energies and your brain for better understanding and applying the teachings of great spiritual masters as such as the mother and Sri Aurobindo. 
So, where do we start? What is the problem I said? Is that prayers are not enough. Rituals are not enough. And I want you to understand, I'm going to explain to you what prayers are, what rituals are, what is faith. You know? And if you go step by step, you understand and apply, you will see that your aspirations, regardless of what they are, will be manifested, will be realized. And then you will say, yes, the divine does exist. God does exist. And this is the most beautiful part of it, that they are not there physically now. But this energy is even more important than the biological body. And this is the entire idea of spirituality. Because we are not just body, as all the great masters have said, that the soul is the true identity of man. But this soul resides in a physical, biological body. So it's a duality, the physical, biological body and the soul. And the process of spirituality is trying to transform this body, not only trying, but undertaking this path of biological transformation in the sense special to start with, with things that arise from the body, from your brain or from your mind. And that too I have to, dis uh, I have to explain to you when I talk of mind and when I talk of brain, what are the differences. Because there is no word apart from mind or mental being, there are no two words. But there are differences, what comes from your brain directly and what comes from your mind, which I call the voice of the soul, the mind, the deeper thing. But we'll talk about that later. Important was, is that you have to understand what is spirituality, what is the process of spirituality. So the definition of terms, I will explain to you, I will read to you, and then you will understand that this is what is meant as well. But right now, before we go to what is spirituality and all that, what are some of the important things that you have to understand and here are some of the questions that were asked to me regarding this particular process of transformation of your biological self into your divine self and here are the, some of the questions that I was asked what is happiness what is felicity what is success you know what why do we seek happiness hmm? what is the what is this thing we call self-realization. How do we define it? What is it? What is it that you mean under self-realization? And why is it that you're not happy? Okay? Because you have not realized yourself. Okay? Because self-realization is like being in a state... Uh, it's a, it is a... Once you have reached it, you have no other desires. Self-realization. It means you have attained everything that you wanted. But we will talk about it more in detail. And then, and then what happens? You want success. You want to be happy. You undertake a particular path. And then you see all of a sudden that you are stuck. That is not happening. I give you a very interesting, and then that is when we have to ask, when do you turn to the divine? When do you turn to spirituality? Why do human beings go to temple and so on? I think personally that there is inborn in us, the divine has put this grain of seeking, of asking, looking for the higher, the better, the more luminous. It is, oh, it is more than an instinct because it's not biological. Instinct is biologically, it comes from your limbic center. But this is something that the divine has implanted in you, that you're seeking inwardly something that you want. And when you get stuck, when your prayers don't get answered, where do you turn to? Or before even you pray, when you get stuck, when you see that you're not going anywhere and you're having problems, you're failing and everything, you're getting, you're being hit constantly by faith or by circumstances, where do human beings turn to? Whom to? Almost everyone turns to a master or to spirituality or to God, as I said. And there's an interesting story, for instance. 
Uh, there is a village in Gujarat, in India. I read about it. Somebody sent me something on the internet. I read about it. And it's very interesting. These villages were very poor. And there was a year when there was an incredible drought, or a number of years where there was such a strong drought that nothing was growing in the fields of these farmers. It's a small village of farmers. And truly, they were starving. And they would have all starved to death, the entire region. And they were desperate because rain was not coming. There was not enough water. So they turned to the mother and Shurabindo. And they wrote to the mother a letter explaining to her their situation in which they were, the precarious situation. The mother sent them a blessing packet. I hope I will have a chance to show you one on the camera once. It's, these are small packages and in which there's another small, it's a small envelope within which there's another envelope which contains rose petals from the mother and Shobindo in it. it. Comes from their room or they touched it or it comes from their spiritual surrounding. It is incredible energy these little and we call them blessing packets in the ashram. So mother sent them a blessing packet. What they did is they took these petals, rose petals, and they mixed it with their grain that they had to sell. And then they plowed their fields and they sowed this grain in these dry fields and started watering the area which they had sowed with these grains with well water. And believe it or not, all of a sudden, everything started growing everywhere. You see how energy spreads from a few petals of rose petals from the mother. This energy of the divine went all through the entire nature. There was rain and they had bumper crops. Today, this village is considered to be one of the richest village in that particular area. It is called Sri Aurobindo Gram. It was the name that mother gave to this village. I am sorry, I can't tell you what is the geographical name or the, the name given by the government or by the municipality, but it's in Gujarat and it is called Sri Aurobindo Gram. And there is, they have built, apparently I've not been there, I saw the pictures of it, a, a temple to the mother and children. And they call it the temple of the mother. So we turn, when we have problems, we turn to the divine. But what are the mistakes that we are making that our prayers are not being answered is because we are not applying what they have taught us. These farmers, they applied it. They took this, they put in the grains, they sowed it. They did not wait at home and look at the sky and pray for rain. No. The mother sent them something, they said, okay, now how do we do? Let us try this. And somebody ha ha got the message. And I'm sure this was a divine message that come to the person who said, let's mix these petals with our grains. And these grains will then have the energy of the mother's blessings. And then we will put them and they will make the rain come. And honest to God, it happened. So they did something. You have to do something. Oh, great. Masters have said, help yourself and God will help you because it's on us, this divine energy, and we have to apply it, we have to do it. And these video clips will explain you. And mother explained me all this. The mother told me how I should apply my knowledge when I treat patients. And we will make a video on that also. What you can do, you are a mechanic perhaps. How do you apply? And so to start with, before I go into the various energies, I want to talk about application I said. So let's give you, let me give you another example, which is truly very important because this example, I don't know, it comes from Indian mythology. And I can't tell you which source gave me this particular story about this farmer who is poor and who from dawn to night toils his earth. Anyway, the story begins otherwise. One of the ardent 
followers of Shiva, worshippers of Shiva, ask Shiva, who is your favorite disciple? And Shiva, he thought Shiva was going to say, you are my favorite disciple, or you are my greatest disciple. Who is your greatest and favorite disciple? And Shiva points to this farmer and says, that farmer who is plowing the fields and who is sweating in the hot sun is my favorite disciple. And this man, amazed and also disappointed, how come? I do everything for you. I pray to you. I worship you. So Shiva says, just a second. I want you to do, I want you to perform something before I explain you. Why this farmer? Shiva gives him a cup of water or a glass of water, if you want to say, a container with water filled to the brim and says to the disciple, you take this and go once around the world and come back to me. But make sure not a single drop falls on the ground. So this disciple goes and he goes all around the world and makes absolutely certain that not a single drop falls on the ground and comes to, to Shiva and says, look my Lord, I performed the duty you asked me to do. And not a drop. And Shiva says, yes, you are right. Not a single drop has fallen out. But now tell me, while you were performing this, while you were doing what I asked you to do, how often did you think of me? How often did you pray to me? And the disciple says, oh, my Lord, I was concentrating on the job you asked me to do to make sure that not a drop falls. And so I did not think about you. I was only concentrating on what I'm doing on this work. And the Shiva says, look, that man, from dawn to dusk, he starts the day with a praise and prayer to me. He works and toils and he sweats and he's constantly aware of my presence in him. And he goes to bed and he prays to me and thanks me for the day. And in his sleep, also he holds me within him. And that is why he is my favorite sadhak or follower. Now, or disciple, now you can understand what it means to apply. So even as a mechanic, you do your work, but you are aware. You are applying this energy of the mother. When I work with my patients, I do what mother asked me to do. And the mother said, when you work, become my consciousness, become show or tree or Bindu's consciousness. If you're not sure, you it, it does not have to be shown on you that you're in a meditative state. My goodness, you won't catch me meditating. But don't do what I do. Just do what you've been doing. Meditate. That's good for you. But when I work, I look as right now what I'm doing. And matter of fact, right now too, I feel her love, her smile, her presence, and their energy in every cell of my body. This is what makes me the happiest man on earth. And it's so simple. I don't sweat for it. She never asked me to sweat. I've never seen mother angry. Mother was always sweet and smiling. She was never sweating. She was never ever in a hurry. And she performed miracles for all of humanity. Sri Aurobindo, imagine the miracles he performed. His is the grace that liberated India, a whole nation. He was like Sri Krishna. He did not pick up arms to fight the British. He inspired the freedom fighters to fight for freedom and he guided them with his light. As much as I know, I have not read about all this, I have heard about these things. But then I connected two and two and I said, it is like Sri Krishna in the battle of Kurukshetra that he could have destroyed the Kauravas with one blink of his eye, even less. And they would not have the Pandavas would not have to fight them. But no, he says to Arjuna, I will guide you. I will drive you a chariot. And he instructs Arjuna. And Arjuna applies this energy of Lord Krishna and wins the battle. 
And again there, I want you to, I hope I will have the chance to explain these things that I myself don't know so well, but one can find out and I will make my research. My research is not always in a library. I do it also through energy also. There are other ways of researching things. So we find out and then we will see what is, what does it mean, the battle of Kurukshetra. You know, it is not cousins killing cousins. No, this is metaphor. You know, the panda was for overcoming their own biological defects or, or hindrances, their, their obstacles. You know, so I want you to follow these videos. I will make, there will be a series of them. This is video clip number one. In the next one, I will read certain questions that people have asked me and then I will answer them one after the other because these questions are interesting and they will truly enlighten your, your path. Uh, knowledge is good, but I want mainly to show you how you can apply that knowledge. So be patient. I repeat a lot and that has to do with my training that in neurology we know that in order to memorize something it has to be repeated quite often. And so if I repeat often it becomes clearer to you and then it becomes a part of you and then you can start applying it and using it. So but for now I want you to keep the presence of the Divine in you, regardless of which spiritual master you follow. I want you to keep their energy, their presence, their smile, their light within you. And the light of the Mother and Shobindo, they are constantly in every cell of my body and it's such a divine feeling. And I'm just like everybody else the happiest man on earth, on earth, living a simple, wonderful, happy life. And this is exactly what I wish you also. Write to me if you need. My email address is on this site, on this channels, on these channels that you see. And you can call me and I promise I will answer. But right now, have fun. And don't forget to be happy. Namaste.